All right, so let's take everything that we've learned so far now in this lesson, and we'll wrap it up by putting all five of those curves on one, uh, on one coordinate plane. Remember, we've got quantity on our horizontal axis. We have dollars per unit on the vertical axis. The first thing we learned about was the demand curve. We know that demand is a negative relationship between price and quantity. Negative relationship means a downward sloping curve, and we said that the demand curve looks something like that. And so there's our demand curve. The next thing that we learned about is we learned about the marginal revenue curve. And remember what we said? We said it's a downward sloping curve that is under the demand curve, and usually it's a little bit steeper, okay? And so I'm going to start maybe right up here, and I'm going to draw it right down here. That is the marginal revenue curve, okay? The third curve that we learned about was the marginal cost curve. And what we learned about the marginal cost curve is that it starts out decreasing a little bit because of economies of scale, then it reaches a minimum point and then it curves upward. And, it, and at that point, it just permanently curves upward. And so, uh, now I also say, well, let me go ahead and draw the whole thing, the marginal cost curve, it'll do something like this. And that is the marginal cost curve. Now here's something else that I said is, I said that we only really care about the marginal cost curve on its upward sloping portion. Therefore, I'm going to erase the downward slope, sloping portion. And what we're now looking at is, I typically draw it as a straight line for, for ease of understanding. And what you're looking at there is the marginal cost curve. So we've got the demand curve, downward sloping, Underneath the demand curve, we've got the marginal revenue curve, downward sloping. And now, so far, the only upward sloping curve we have is the marginal cost curve. And now, we have two more curves to graph, the average variable cost and the average total cost curve. Now, what I haven't said anything about is, is the relationship between the marginal cost curve or the average variable cost curve or the average total cost curve with the demand or the marginal revenue curve. For all intents and purposes, the marginal revenue curve and demand curve, they're related to each other, but they are basically independent of the cost curves. So the price and revenue curve curves are related to each other, and all three of the cost curves are related to each other. But they are independent of each other in terms of where they are on the coordinate plane. Now in the next lesson, we're going to learn how all five of the curves interact with each other, but the demand curve and the marginal revenue curve do not require that the cost curves be anywhere in particular on the market graph, on the, on the coordinate plane. So, the, so as I draw the average variable cost curve and the average total cost curve, I'm only going to draw them relative to the marginal cost curve. I am not going to consider at all the marginal revenue curve and the demand curve. Okay? The only requirement for the average variable cost curve is that it be is that its lowest point, that its lowest point be um, where the marginal cost curve is. So that's going to be the lowest point of the average variable cost curve. And so from here, I'm now going to curve upward be because we know that the average variable cost curve curves upward on the, on the right side of marginal cost. And then I'm going to go this way. And we know that as it leads up to marginal cost, it slopes downward. So the average variable cost curve here is going to slope downward. It's going to hit a minimum where marginal cost is, and then it's going to curve upward. So now we have four out of the five curves, and all we have left is to, is to sketch in the average total cost curve. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to maybe, I'm going to sketch it maybe up here. It does not have to be above the demand curve. It could be below the demand curve. It could be way down here. It could be way up here. The demand curve is irrelevant. But I'm going to go ahead and sketch in the, the average total cost curve right here. And, what, and the only requirement 
the, the, there's three requirements for the average total cost curve. The first one is its lowest point has to be uh, where it touches the marginal cost curve. That's the first requirement. Second requirement is it has to be above the average variable cost curve because it is uh, because it includes fix, average fixed cost and average variable cost does not include average fixed cost. And then the third requirement is as I sketch the average total cost curve, it has to get closer and closer to the average variable cost curve. And on the left side, it has to be farther and farther away from the average variable cost curve. So here's what I'm going to do. Going forward, I'm just going to make it get closer and closer and closer to average variable cost, so average total cost. And going backwards, I'm going to make sure that it gets farther and farther and farther away from the average variable cost curve. And so now, what you are looking at here is all five of the elements that you need to understand for understanding market structure. A demand curve, a marginal revenue curve, a marginal cost curve, an average variable cost curve, and an average total cost curve. Okay, And that's it for this lesson. You have to be able to identify the, uh, all of these curves. If I were to give you a quiz question or a few quiz questions where I left out the labels and all I gave you were the curves, you should be able to identify these curves. If I gave you only the demand curve and the marginal revenue curve, you should be able to identify them. If I gave you only the marginal cost curve and the average variable cost curve and the average total cost curve, you should then be able to identify those as well. Okay, that's it for this lesson. And then we're, what we're working up to is a lot of fun. In the next lesson, we're going to take these curves and we're going to analyze a company or analyze an industry.